Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leech Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another show. Um, found something uh, in the back of the cabinets, and uh, it's the BV 2001 Bozo Red Wine um, from Napa Valley. It's the Signet Collection. So we're going to try it out. Now, this is a combination of a bunch of different varietals. And um, from what I can tell, they don't make this anymore. As a matter of fact, over time, it seemed like they were reducing the price. Oh, um, I don't have a price for it because it's not available anymore. Um, but it looks like it was sold for $25 a bottle at the time. So um, at least that's according to wine.com when I looked up the actual uh, vintage. But over time, it seemed like the price went down. And it, at least in 2005, they changed the label to be like a juggler. And it was a $10 bottle of wine. Um, and I think they made a 2006, and I didn't find anything else after that. So um, this is a combination of Zinfandel, Petit Syrah, Charbonneau, Syrah, Langrin, uh, Val de, Val de Guy, uh, Toriga, Nationale. So I'll go over some of those varietals that you're not used to hearing very often uh, a little bit. So let's, let's check it out. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, kind of clean. It's like this chemical type smell to it. A um, little bit of fruit too. It, it's something that I've smelled before and it's not really necessarily a pleasant smell. I've smelled it before um, and, and, and man, I cannot identify it. Um, but it's nothing I've ever smelled in a wine. So, um, it's like something I've smelled a long, long time ago, like when I was like a kid type of thing. I know what it smells like. It smells like a stink bomb. Very, very slight. You know, little smoke bombs. You, you know, those, like the, the smoke bombs you bought when you were a kid for fireworks for 4th of July. That's what it smells like. A very, very slight, slight smell with that. Wow, that's weird. Okay, so let's taste and see how it is. It's not bad. Um, definitely need to be drinking it now. Uh, I can't see it. I can't see you letting this sit for another eight years. Um, you could probably let it sit for another two or three. Um, I'm just saying, I don't get the I don't get the smoke bomb um, flavor to it, but man, I can really smell it. Actually, I do kind of get that smoke bomb. So it's smokiness. Um, Kind of fruity. It's really soft. There's not much tannins to it. Um, Zinfandel is probably uh, the most, the biggest percentage of the grape or of the of the wine. Uh, there was one mention, I think, of the 2005 or 2004. I think it was on Wine.com that actually gave the breakdown of all the of all the varietals. But there was a couple differences in uh, some of the smaller, like the lesser varietals, than what's on here. But um, you know, the Zinfandel is probably going to be the biggest thing. Then you have the Petit Syrah. Um, and usually, you know, you're going to get lots of tannins. But because it is, it is, you know, getting up there in age, the tannins have softened. I 
we get some fruitiness. Um, it's really just kind of a pleasant mouthfeel. I don't get any type of really, um, I don't get this big uh, flavors hitting me. I just get a lot of smoke. Smoke and um, maybe cherries. So like a, a smoky cherry. But it's, it's pretty light. There's not much going on with it. I mean, it's really easy drinking. Uh, it's not unpleasant. Um, it says on the back, the, 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 this wine has a big red nose, generous body, and it tastes as big as its size, 34 feet. It's a virtual three-ring circus in the mouth. Not really. I think it was only half a ring. Um, with in-your-face berry pie flavors. Not really in my face. Uh, maybe eight years ago it was. Um, it can be juggled with many flavorful foods from a sort of flaming shish kebab to citrus bratwurst. Um, I I've never had a citrus bratwurst, so I have no clue what that's going to be like. But I could see pairing this with, you know, that kind of food, um, you know, grilled, grilled meats. I can see doing that. Um, but I, I don't, I, I don't, I think the food would overpower it at this point. Now, maybe if I had this say three or four years ago, it'd be a lot bolder, a lot fuller, and uh, it'd be a lot better. But um, definitely at 25 bucks at this point, definitely not a recommendation. Um, if it was like an eight dollar bottle of wine, I'd be a little more like, "Hey, this is pretty good." But uh, I mean, it's not bad, but it, it just kind of has nothing to it. Initially, I was going to score it um, a little bit higher. Uh, matter of fact, the the scores I found um, were from about three or four years ago, most of it, and they were in the that eighty five to eighty eight range. Um, the one person had had one, and then two years later they had it again, another bottle. And I guess the bottle was corked. Um, I'm going to give this probably an eighty. It's. I think it's past its prime. Uh, I think it really needed to be needed to be drank uh, at least three years ago. Um, so you know, it's a forgotten bottle of wine, and that's what happens sometimes. You have this bottle of wine that you you intended to keep for a little bit, or it was probably a gift. Um, so it was one of those things you kind of forget about. But uh, you know, we'll see. So let's uh, let's wrap this up as fast as I can because I got a few things I got to talk about. Um, all right, Charbonneau, uh, La Green, and uh, well, Val, uh, Val de Gui and Torriga Nacional. These are all four grapes that you don't normally hear about. Now, Charbonneau is a, it, they grow it in California, but it's, it's, not, it's not really that big of a grape there. It's actually from, it's actually more widely grown in Argentina, and it's really from the Savoy area in France. It's known as a couple different grapes, uh, a couple different names, Corbeau, uh, Douche Noir, and uh, Charbonneau. Um, but char charbono, but spelt more French instead of, you know, charbono. Okay, like this is here in English or in English. Um, La Green is actually native to northern Italy. Uh, it's in the Trent Trentino region. Um, according to my research, it's pretty rare outside the United States. Um, you know, this is eight nine years ago. Uh, it probably didn't make it much of an impact, <laughs> at least not uh, for BV. Uh, Val de Gouy is, um, it used to be called Napa Gamay. Um, in the U.S., uh, start, starting in 1999, they were no longer, winemakers no longer allowed to use that because they found out it's not the Gamay grape. They thought it was the Gamay from Beaujolais. Um, it's actually a grape from the languedoc Rousson. It's sometimes called uh, uh, Gros uh, Ojoie. So, uh, you know, that Ojoie grape that we talked about last week on Sommelier School. So there's a there's a red grape uh, version of that that they use in Languedoc. Um, and then uh, Torriga Nacional, that's actually a Portuguese grape. Uh, it's normally used for port, so sometimes they've been making it more often for table wines in the Douro and the uh, Dao. Um, and it's supposed to provide structure to wines when, when they're using it. But, you know, it, it's there's so many uh, grapes in here, I don't think it's really, you know, I think it, was, it probably doesn't have much of a percentage. Uh, considering it's the last on the label, and uh, as far as I know, that the order of grapes is the order of percentages. So there might be like a one percent of that in there, just for I don't know for for kicks and giggles. Um, BV was founded in 1900, so it's been around for a while. Um, 
it's, it's uh, if you don't know how to pronounce the first part, the, the B part, it's Bolio. Um, I'm sorry, Bolio, Bolio Vineyards. Uh, it's the BV. Bolio was uh, it means beautiful place, and it was named after uh, the wife of the um, uh, the original the founder, this uh, Georges de la Tour, his wife Fernand. Uh, she described the land, which is uh, in Rutherford, the Rutherford Vineyard in Napa Valley. She described it as a beautiful place, hence the name. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's all right. I mean, we'll finish, probably finish it off tonight just because. But a uh, couple things, uh, shout-outs, and uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so had a little con mini contest with the picture from my profile picture from Twitter. If you haven't been to Twitter, why haven't you been there if you don't follow me there? Um, I had a link from my Twitter post and also on Facebook, so the Facebook page uh, to the actual Flickr page where I have the full version of the picture. Um, so I asked people to, there was four things in the picture, I asked them to name them and, and I'll give them shout outs. So here's what happened. Nobody got all four um, entirely. Uh, some they, they got close, but they didn't get everything exactly. So we'll start off with SF underscore Steph, um, San Francisco Stephen, not Steph as in Stephanie. Um, he saw that the iPhone was part of it, um, but didn't know why the iPhone was in there. Identified that I have the flip camera, but didn't understand, but didn't identify why the flip camera's in there. Flip camera's in there because that's the camera I use to record all the stuff. Um, the underscore go go. Um, she figured out that the business cards, there was something about the business cards, but since I had the 1337 wine business cards in front, didn't notice the Mars business cards in the back, uh, or didn't identify those as being the significant thing. I know some of you people are going to be like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Um, on some of these things, but, uh, the Mars is my, uh, is my other, you know, uh, moniker. It's my other, uh, name all over the place. And, uh. You know, my Mars 8 is my other Twitter thing, it's the, and the business card is the background I use for uh, Twitter. Also, it's my normal background on the computer, even though the picture says 1337 wine. I, I did a mock-up of that just for the picture itself, but my normal background is of Mars. Um, Gigat Bits figured out, was the only person I figured out the iPhone, and that the iPhone has the picture on it is the picture of the picture. So I had, I took the picture from behind the camera, so it's a picture of the set, and she identified it. It was, was kind of hard to tell, but if you use the large size version of the picture, it was a little bit easier to figure out. Um, there, there are quite a few people that were keying in on the, the reflections in the wine glass. Um, I wish that could have been the significant thing, but that was like accidental. That was like, ooh, that was kind of cool. Because, guys, I took about 100 pictures that day, and that was the one I decided to use. So not all of them had the reflection. It wasn't like it was a planned thing. It was like... That's kind of cool, and the rest of the picture was good. Um, but yes, uh, 1337 reflected was a neat little thing, but it's not wasn't significant. Uh, also, people were talking about the the magazine. The magazine um, was just there just for, as a prop. There's nothing significant about it. Uh, I have been reading Wine Spectator. I just started subscribing to it, so it's not something that I've had a really long subscription to. Um, Texas Wine Passport, yeah, that wasn't really uh, what I was going for. Honestly, the reason that the Wine Passport was in there was to cover my address on the on the label for Wine Spectator, so you couldn't see where I live. Um, but I mean, it was like, hey, you know, Texas, you know, we'll make that we'll make that association. Um, and then really, the person that got the most was Pressman, but she's my mom, so she she had she, she kind of kind of knew most of the stuff and she was sitting right next to me when I was talking about all this and looking at the picture and asking me questions so it was real quick I could say yes no you're getting close and then all that so let's go over the things the iPhone had the picture of, of the set uh, the flip camera is the camera I use to record the podcast um, the uh, business cards the Mars business cards that's my other part of my life my personal life and the shirt I wore in the picture is the shirt from the very first episode it's actually the first three episodes because I recorded three in one day so uh, nobody, you know, nobody really caught the shirt, but I didn't think anyone would. Um, those were the four significant things. The shirt was a planned thing. The phone was a planned thing. The, the camera, the flip camera was a planned thing later on. It was like, oh, I mean, put this in there too. After did like 25, 50 pictures, I put the flip camera in there. Um, and then the, the, actually the, the, the picture of the set, 
that was like the last set of pictures I took. I was like, that'd be kind of cool to put in there as a little Easter egg. And of course, the, the business cards to talk about my personal life. So those are the four significant things. I really appreciate everyone who was trying to guess on that. And um, hopefully I'll have something, something else fun to do uh, at a later point in time. And stay tuned either the rest of this week or beginning of next week for something pretty uh, special for me. Uh, that's it. Gone way over time. Click all the links. Friend me up. That's it. See you again tomorrow. Hey, folks. Uh, never done this part before, but just finished having lunch and had some of this during lunch. It got worse over time. I mean, that that whole stink bomb, sweet, sickly smell um, got worse. Um, I think I gave it an 80 out of just intrigue that I've never had something like that before but I just can't get past how it tastes I mean this this is a this is horrible now uh, now that it was opened up for a little bit longer and I think I got past that initial um, that initial thing of wow this is interesting I've never had this before in a wine Recognize that that's a bad thing, at least in this case. Um, I, I attribute it to the wine's just too old, uh, and it's a wine that probably should have been stored at a better temperature. This might have been stored in two different locations. Not really sure where where it's been, but uh, it could have been somewhere else for a while, and then it came back up here, whatever. But um, it's bad. I'm not even going to finish drinking it. I'm going to dump it out. So, <clears throat> score... I don't know, 60. I know I just dropped 20 points in like an hour, but it's one of those, as I started drinking it and started thinking about it, it's bad. And I think it's just a bad bottle of wine. I don't know. So I, I think either it's too old, the storage killed it. Um, I don't necessarily think the wine itself was bad because it got some pretty decent ratings uh, a few years ago. I think it's just past its prime. And um, uh, I don't think it's really it was necessarily a bad bottle to begin with. Um, and that's just something to realize. I mean, this is a this is a 2001 vintage, and if you're going to be storing wines for for you know long term for more than a couple years, then you need to make sure you're storing them you know at, at cooler temperatures, not just room what we call room temperature. And um, yeah, that's it. We'll see everybody again next time.